And so we'll end with, I guess, um, Sharon and Tiff, and then Kevin again. How has, um, what do you see your areas of service? How have you been, uh, I guess, guided in that area? Sharon, you can go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, I don't know. As I'm thinking about how I've served in church, served God over the years, I think for me it's been very context dependent. Like, where has God placed me in? What season of life am I in? But also, like, He used that in conjunction with, like, how He has, like, grown my heart. Or, from my desires and also like my talents and my skills. So I became a Christian in college. So I wasn't serving like in youth, like where you guys are right now. I wasn't even church. I left church. Um, I became a Christian in college. And so one of my first areas of service was to, I don't know before that. I was on the e- evangelism team. The gospel oh, sharing team. cool. The fishing team? Is Actually, that what they no, call it? It's not a team. There was a class oh. uh, called Fros- Gospel Proclamation. Um, each quarter, there's like a new set of students. So I came in as a student first. You learn how to do cold contact evangelism. You like just went onto your campus and like went up to a random stranger like, hi, what's your day? <laughs> um, do you want to hear about God? <laughs> um, so I, I was like a student then. And then I think God really like grew my heart for that to return as a trainer for that class basically every uh, quarter. So that was my first area of ministry. And then after that, at the same time, I was a small group leader, not for like younger people, but like peers my age um, in my college ministry. And then I went on a short term mission trip to China with my church. Um, and then one area, like sort of an unofficial area of ministry there was like with children. And so I guess I just like naturally gravitated to the children. All my team members were like sharing, like, do you want to be an elementary school teacher in the future? <laughs> like, what? No. <laughs> um, and they're like, okay, like, have you ever thought about serving in children's ministry? And I'm like, I've never, literally that thought has never crossed my mind before. So, like, I think God used that trip to, like, get me exposure to, like, different areas of ministry and, like, use God's people to affirm that, I guess, that quality in me. Um, so I went back, like, here to my church and... Um, signed up to volunteer in the evening church ministry at my church, um, which was, it was fun. Um, I think I was one of the first people in my ministry fellowship to do that. Um, and I think that's like really God growing my heart for that. Yeah, so I came here and I, I joined the children's ministry. <laughs> nice. um, I served in Awana and then I guess I sort of went up in grade Woo-hoo. into youth ministry. Um, I guess that's my journey. I've done other stuff on the side, but that's my main service. Nice. Do you miss like, oh, go being in children's at all? Like the dodgeball? Like the kids? <laughs> I love more ball. <laughs> oh, we should play that more then. <laughs> <laughs> that's my ball. That's a different energy, though. Like, I can't imagine going back down to Moana. <laughs> yeah. um, that's good. Uh, we'll go to Tiff. Um, um, okay. Yeah. That's okay. Okay. Yes, we must. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that I I think back to the, the main ways that I serve are through teaching and through administratively, like planning and stuff. And I, and if I think back to like how I developed these skills, I think back to high school. Like I was an ASB my whole time, and I feel like I grew so much in my executive, like administrative, like planning mm-hmm. skills there. Um, but I never really thought that. I thought ASB, it was like, sep- I separated those in my mind in high school. And mm. in college, I served in a ministry called Body Life that was all event planning. Oh. And that's when I really saw, saw it meld in. I was like, oh, I did this in ASB, and I can do this here in college through my ministry. So I did, I started gravitating towards event planning. So at church, I did a lot of, like, um, like I did events. So, like, if you guys remember, there were, used to be like food fair. Oh, yeah. Yes. So I did that for a few years, and that That's was good. a lot of work. But it's like event stuff, you know, and I think, um, and I still do that. I think two years ago, we worked with Gabe on the Undivided sing- oh, yeah. the Singles Conference on the back end. Um, so I, I enjoy doing that, and I, I find it like if I can help like a pastor with 
taking the load off of that so you can focus on teaching and ministry with your people. Like I'm, I'm happy to do that. Um, and honestly, teaching has been something that I've put off because I do that <coughs> as a job. And I always felt like I plan every day for my classes and I don't want to make church feel like my work. At, you know, like I don't want it to be intertwined. So for the longest time, like, I held off on teaching. I did, like, preschool ministry, which is when I had some of you guys. Like, really? Pre- yes. What? I had- <laughs> so, yes, I had them when they were, like, four years old, I think. Um, yeah, so that was the last time I did any sort of, like, Sunday teaching. And I realized, like, that's really hard for me to plan every week along with planning for school. So I, I took a big break. And I think... Um, I just focused on like big events and stuff that I would do, but nothing consistent because I felt like I couldn't do it like capacity wise. And then I think once I had Bethany, my first daughter, I I was like, oh, I, it's hard for me to juggle work and then these things. And so I realized I'm going to focus on relationships. So I, I took on discipling a few women um, and I was like, that's what I can manage because I can do that after bedtime. You know, like I can't. Like, come to Unicoi after bedtime because someone has to be at home with the kids. Mm-hmm. And so I think that was what was flexible for my schedule. And then it wasn't until last year, I think, it was funny that Aaron approached me because I don't really talk to Aaron now. <laughs> like, I hadn't really talked to him that much. But then, like, it was so random because I had been thinking, like, oh, no. And before that, I served in church for two years because I was like, oh, I really want to do counseling. But then Friday nights were hard because after having a kid, it's like someone has to stay at home with the kid. And so... Um, yeah, I had, and I had been thinking because now I'm out of the classroom and I was thinking like I want to serve consistently like on a weekly basis now. Like I think I have the capacity for that. And randomly, Aaron's like, he went to teach Sunday school and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, yeah, and I was like, you know what? Like I miss being in, like, I'm not in the classroom at work anymore and I really miss being with students. And so I, I was like, sure. So I came in last spring and kind of sprinkled in and tried it out and I like really loved it. And um, yeah, so this year I'm doing Sunday school with you all and I, I really love it. Like just being able to, you know, do the things that I'm coaching other teachers to do. Like I get to try it with you and kind of see like, oh, that didn't work. Like that <laughs> was not a good, like I need to tweak it and like try something else. And so... Mm-hmm. Like, thanks for letting me try different things in here. But that's kind of where I'm at. And now I'm kind of, which is funny, I didn't want to do my job at church, but I'm kind of am because now I'm helping Auntie Katie oh, with yeah. training like <laughs> teachers as well. But it's something that I enjoy and I find that it kind of helps me to be better in, in both worlds. So, mm-hmm. yeah. All right, Kevin, your last man. How did you develop oh, your teaching, teaching gift? Uh, you can try to think back as far as you can. Yeah, more relatable to them. and then I'll I'll close this. I remember my first teaching was in seventh grade, a presentation, like you know. Uh, uh, <laughs> but I was not I was not good at it. I was very nervous. I remember I would start to talk and I burst out laughing because I was so nervous. <laughs> and that happened like two or three times. My my classmates were laughing with me. I don't think they're laughing at me because like I think they're my friends. <laughs> but I felt like oh this is like so funny. Um, I don't know if it's fun, but it's funny. Um, but then, obviously, in college, it's like, well, being a pastor, you have to speak a lot. How do I know I even like this? Um, and even when I first started, I was like, I just feel so robotic or awkward. Like, I'm trying to imitate the people I see on YouTube, like, or preachers, not just random people. <laughs> um, but it just seems like it's so robotic. But um, honestly, it's almost one of those things where I didn't think I would ever have, I guess, that gift. But I think sometimes you have to develop it, and God sometimes does like he, it's kind of like dormant, like it's in there, but you have to really work hard to develop a God-given gift. And just over the years, I'm in a place where like, this is pretty fun. Like I love engaging in a classroom, preaching for the pulpit. Like I love that um, ability to do that. It, it's just, I never thought I could say that, but it, it really is um, getting trained. So knowledge, having experience, like opportunities to do it um, and just being coached by someone or mentored by someone who is um, more experienced and just, over periods of time, repetition, uh, God will, God helps me just get better and better at it. So that's what I would say. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys, for sitting in class. Um, thanks for being open to something a little bit different. Hope it was a good break. We'll be back on our regular schedule next week.